Lastly, Russia. Uh, in the news recently, you know since the attempt at a reset, Russia has never been more rogue and openly oppositional than they are right now. Your opponent has taken the approach of trying to cotton to Putin. He says he's a strong leader, stronger than the President of the United States. The reason he says he does this is because where has being confrontational gotten us with Russia? What do you make of his strategy about sweet-talking Putin as a way of opening a channel of communication? Well, I think his ignorance about uh, Russia and Putin are dangerous. Uh, in an interview, he didn't even know that Putin had invaded and occupied Crimea. So this is just more of his loose talk, his kind of uh, reckless uh, pontificating uh, that really doesn't have any uh, substance to it. Uh, I, th I think that if there are ways to do business with Russia, we should always be open. And that's what the reset accomplished. When Putin came back, he came back, I think, with the view that his highest goal had to be to uh, prevent uh, what he considers to be the, his neighborhood uh, in Eastern Central Europe all the way to Central Asia from falling under European Union and American influence. And he has tried to disrupt and interfere with uh, democratic elections, as he has even in our country uh, attempted to do with this round of elections. So he's pretty transparent that he's looking for ways of elevating Russia and himself. What I most uh, worry about with Trump is that he is conveying several impressions uh, to people around the world that are quite damaging with respect to Russia and Putin, this uh, romance with Putin, with dictators, he's praised Saddam Hussein, for example, as well, uh, sends a message that maybe the United States no longer really stands for human rights, for freedom, for human dignity, uh, stands against aggressive behaviors. That's a terrible message because that just further uh, uh, encourages leaders who are like Putin, wanting to, you know, do their own version of oppressing their people and reaching out beyond their borders. Secondly, his very dangerous talk about Muslims, both American Muslims and international Muslims, uh, makes our job against ISIS, makes our job against terrorism much harder. Uh, and we already know he's done damage. We already know from experienced uh, intelligence and counterterrorism experts that leaders within ISIS are rooting for his victory. Now, you, you combine a, a free pass for Putin on aggressive behavior and a welcome by ISIS that his language plays right into their hands and will give them more credibility in saying that this is some kind of civilizational war. We're going to have to undo the damage that he's already done in the campaign after this election and make it very clear the United States stands by our word. We stand by our friends and allies. We're willing to work with anybody, including, of course, Putin. I've, I've had many conversations with Putin. But we're not going to do it by just rolling over and adopting his wish list, which is exactly what Donald Trump has done.